Hey guys, it's Tim Gillette, author, creator of The Rock and Roll Keys Business Success. I'm here with another one of your rock around your blog shows. We're here live today on Blab talking about the idea of telling your story. And I wanted to relate the idea to telling your story versus telling someone else. Over the past three days, I have gone on to three individual Blabs and I've done this. I'm going to share with you. Uh, yeah, you're welcome to jump in, Daphne. Welcome to jump in a seat. Um, I went into one Blab one day. And just started telling my stories and sharing people my experience for the day and going on and on. And everybody was all, here, let me bring you in there. Okay. Hey, Daphne. Uh, everybody was all excited. They were laughing. They were enjoying the times. They were they were just getting into me doing that. So then I thought, well, I think it was fun. I didn't think they were all that funny. It's just my stories. It's what I'm experiencing. Well, I didn't think it all that funny. But they weren't experiencing it. I was. So then next day, I go into someone else's blab. And I'm in there talking. And uh, again, I don't go into blabs and I don't twist subjects around to try to prove something. However, I was trying to, at that time, I'm like, let me try to prove a point so I can build the, what I was going to do, talk about today. I was going to build this an experience to share with you why you can and can't and how you got to do things to make it work. So I went to the second blab and I, I, I was in the conversation and talking and I waited till the window opened. And then I went in and I told the story related to what we were talking about that was someone else's story in someone else's experience and not mine. And I got the, what are you talking about? Huh? That's not funny. They didn't find it funny. They didn't even find it entertaining or educational. And I thought, hmm, okay. So when I tell my story, no matter how boring I think it is, they find it hilarious because I'm telling it from my point of view. But when I tell someone else's story who I think is hilarious story, I'm telling it from a third person and I wasn't there to experience it. And now I'm sharing it and they're not relating. So then the third experience was I tried to go in and tell a story that involved um, that I was there. All right. But it was someone else's story. So the two of us are in there, in, in there. But I'm telling the story from my point of view, not from the both points of view. So what I mean by that is, is like if I'm telling a story and it's all about me and my, my experiences is, in this case here, it was a joint experience that made the story funny. So the story now is not as funny because I'm only telling one side of it. You're not getting the second side of it and it didn't seem as funny. So those three experiences and telling stories taught me something and I wanted to bring them on here today. The second time I went in, I told a story that actually is a good friend of mine who's an actor and it's an experience that he has. He shares from stage on a regular basis and I told his story. And it is hilarious. And if you ever hear it, you'll, you'll be on the floor laughing, not believing you're hearing this because you've seen this person on TV and movies. And you won't believe it because every time you see him on a TV and movie, you're going to be thinking about that story. The second story I told was it's me and my regular experiences. I live these things. So I experienced them. I'm telling you from my point of view, because to me, it wasn't that funny. It's just I went through it. I just want living in my life and everybody's like, man, that's just hilarious what you're talking. So, I mean, that's it. When we start living and telling our own stories, other people are not experiencing it, what we are going through. And while we may not find it funny, all right, uh, you know what I mean? And I can tell you stories that weren't funny to me, but by the time I get on telling you a story, you're like, oh my God, that's funny. Yeah, because it happened to me. I don't find it all that funny unless I turn around and make it funny. So what I wanted to put at this is you've got to, if you're, if you're doing blogging, you're doing a, an online show like this, you're doing a podcast or a video, you've got to make it your own stories. All right. I can't tell. I, Bill, I think Bill Rose still in the room. I can't tell Bill Rose stories. I'm not Bill. I've not lived Bill's life. I've not lived it through his eyes, through his experiences. And if I try to tell it, no matter how funny I thought it was when Bill told me, it ain't going to work. They're not going to, they're not going to keep coming back for that. You know what I mean? There, there's only sometimes... That they're they're going to listen, but they're going to be like, unless Bill was in here telling it, that they're not going to find it funny. I'm going to sit here and tell it, and it's oh yeah, okay, yeah, cool. Now if I tell the story I lived, the experience I went through, the stumbling down I did, and let me give you an example. As you know, I, I tell a story one, one of, the, of the times that I've gone out on the motorcycle and done all kinds of weird and strange things. So the time one time I actually went uh, uh, out on a motorcycle ride and it started raining. And I, that was the day I actually started to get rain gear, all right? I used to have this black, dark rain gear. And I stopped and got this bright orange rain gear. 
and I'm actually riding into work, and it's brighter and rain here in the pouring rain, uh, and, and I pull in, and uh, I walk into my manager laughing her ass off at me showing up to work in the rain. And the reason she's laughing her ass off is because what kind of nut is out there in this stuff on that motorcycle? Oh, shit. The guy who actually has to show up and relieve me of my duties today is showing up. <laughs> Type deal. Funny. If you were there, all right. But if, like, Bill was in the room trying to tell that story, it's not funny then. Let me sit there and tell you his stories. It's my story. I experienced it. I learned this from my friend, uh, my friend Craig, who actually he toured with a band. And, uh, you know, what I mean, while he was trying to tell a story, everybody was interested in the stories of the band, not his. He doesn't own the stories of the band. He wasn't there for all the experiences. But when he tells it from his point of view and what he went through, the crap he pulled while he was with the band, it now becomes entertaining. So that's where you got to learn to tell your own story. How many of you in the room that right now are uh, trying to develop your own stories? or working on a story that you maybe want to develop and put into a blog post or put into a video or something like that, and you want help on, on creating it. Um, I have this great guy. I'm trying to work on, on getting him on, actually on here on one of these shows who actually does a workshop called I Can Tell Your Story Better Than You Can. And he helps people guide their story and make it out in an emphasis point to make a point or, or to do there. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody's up in Wisconsin today, man. I don't know what it is. They just they, nobody's in Texas today, just me. So I'm in Texas, but is it showing me I'm in Texas, or is it showing me that I'm actually broadcasting from Wisconsin? So anyway, um, streaming need to find our story. Marion Landscape, who are you? Let me find out who are who you are. So, where's the country? Creating outdoor expense. Um, if you want to jump in the window real quick, I actually, uh, I, I'll, I'll see what I can do with you on that. So I'll look at your blog too. So yeah, man, I'm in Texas, buddy. You knew that, right? Huh. So Daphne, did we lose you or? I think we lost her. She went black. Uh. Uh, 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 Mary Annie, is that what it's called? Uh, accept you, please. It's just, it, 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 it's got you there and it's got locked out. So I don't know what happened. Uh, um, refresh, uh, Daphne, because and, 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 your screen went black in here and it's not showing you there. So um, I don't know what happened. And it won't let me X you out either, so. That's the other puzzling thing, whether it's Blab or it's me. So Blab could be acting up. So Robin Wright has joined the room. Now it's real funny stories are going to get here because she can tell you all the funny stories about me. Um, so uh, Marion Landscape, I've actually, I'm going to pull up your blog here. All right. And, and telling your stories is you've got to make your experiences about what's going on. It's probably Blab. It's been kind of quirky. Okay. Thanks, Bill. Um, uh, yeah, it, it's off the edge for some reason or another. There you are. Can we hear you now? I don't know. Can you hear me? Oh, there you are. I'm hearing you, but my screen is totally black. So what do I need to do, Bill? I don't know. I'm, see I'm not seeing you either, Tim. So okay. both... Both seats are black for me. I don't know why. But seeing that you can hear me, I guess it's okay. I don't know. I can hear you and see you. So, yes, well, Matt, I'm drinking wine already. It's almost five o'clock. Are the people seeing me? I don't know. Yeah, some people are saying in the chat room they can see you. Can you see the chat room, Daphne? Yes, I'm seeing the chat room. I see Bill. I see another lady in brown here. I forgot her name, but I've seen her before. Okay. I'm you, I'm seeing a green circle. I'm seeing the gentleman in a okay. baseball cap and the gentleman in the glasses. Uh huh. It's Matt. Matt in there. So yeah. Um. Hey, Brandon's in there too. So oh, Brandon, man. Hey, Brandon, you can jump into the window if you want. We're talking about stories, and that man, that boy's got a story. So, um. <laughs> but I mean, yeah. When you get out there, guys, it's like you know what I mean. Whatever your stories are, everything in my life becomes a story. Mm -hmm. um, I'm always looking for the unique way to to educate or entertain with it. 
You know what I mean? You got that's the two factors I like to use. There's other things you're supposed to. I, mean, I forget what what uh, um, I've heard. Um, Bill, I'm, I, maybe you can remind me. I've heard Robert talk about the, the, the three things, or was it four, or just two that you need to do with all your stuff. And I, I believe in, and you got to entertain and educate. And if you can do both at the same time, you're going to be more successful. If you can, and that's what I've always found. Whether you, when you're telling stories, all right, to do both, entertain and educate at the same time. When you can do that, you're going to get people involved in your stories. Uh, the, the other loop that I've heard into it was, and I've watched a guy in California who is a master at doing this is he starts telling a story and it's that's always his own experiences. Huh? That's Kyle. I talked about Kyle. Um, I, I'm talking, I they actually know the guy I'm talking about is Matt, Matt, uh, Matt Browning. I hope you know, Matt. Mm -mm, no, I don't. Okay. okay. Um, Matt tells stories out there in California. When I'm out there in California. He'll tell a story. And when he's doing it, about three quarters of the way through the story, um, what what happens three quarters of the way during through the story is he kind of stops, and then he starts. He gets he's got your attention, and he stops, and in a way, he kind of shifts the conversation in a way to start teaching you, and doesn't finish the last part of the story. In other words. It's like he's, what do they call it? it what, the term they have for it is um, uh, closing the loop. He leaves an open loop like the story's not finished. And unless you are really good at listening to him, you can't tell because he, he goes on teaching and he finishes his teaching without ever finishing the story. And he's good at it. I wish I could be that good. I'm not. <laughs> I've got to finish the story. I need closure. <laughs> I just want to say I need closure to be able to finish my story. But that's it, is when you get out into the stories and they're all, yeah, Matt, it, it has pissed me off, but now I'm used to it because I know the story. Uh, so, I mean, it, 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 the idea behind it is to engage the audience, all right? He entertains you, he educates you, and he's got you so wrapped up in that entertainment and education that you forget about the story. Like I said, unless you've listened to him enough times to go, hey, wait a minute, and know what he's doing, you never realize that he never finishes the story. I can figure it out because I've heard him do it before. But on average, 99% of the time, people do not know that he didn't finish the story. How, how would that be to grab your audience with a story? Now, I can't tell the story with a lot of other people. I can't go out and tell their story and then leave the loop because someone else is going to come in and close it. It's their story, not mine. You catching that? That it's not your story. So if I actually told the loop story and I left part of it out, but it wasn't my story, it was Bill's story. And how many of you can just, well, just you, you forget it. You're going to stop listening to me and go over there and listen to Bill. But if it's my story, I've got you hooked in there because you know the only way to find out the finish of the story is to pay attention to Tim. No. Anyway, Daphne, is your microphone working too? Because you kind of go in and out in the microphone. Um, are you hearing me? I hear you. Yeah. Okay. I, I am just using my iPod because the stream on my laptop is not strong enough for Blab. Oh, okay. I see. I always have a problem with iPads. That's why I never use the iPad on, on Blab. I always use either the phone or the computer. But so. Oh, I don't. I have a Droid, so. Ah. I, I've never used um, the iPod. I've never used the Blab on there. Ah. How is my sound now? Am I coming through clearly? Yeah, your sound comes through really good. Okay. Well, ah. I, guess I won't be seeing me, so I hope I'm presentable to the other folks. <laughs> She can now tell the story how she was uh she was like hiding, but everyone else could see her, but she couldn't. Yeah, and it's so challenging for me to hide, you know, because I I I come very boldly Thanks, in, every, Matt. in everything I do. <laughs> well, Matt's gotta take off. Thanks for stopping by, Matt. It's always good to see you, buddy. So I mean, anybody in the chat room, if you want to grab any other seats and talk about your stories, all right, and how we can help transition them in a way that you can use them in a blog, I would be glad to help today. 
Uh, again, we only have about another uh, about another 30 minutes here at most, and I've got to be off and gone someplace. So, All right, um, so I get a go on my story. I have to figure out which one to close, which one to choose. At my age, you have a lot of stories. You have a lot of stories? Yeah, I'm 68 years young, so I have lots of stories. So I guess I'll choose one today. Yeah. What, well, if you are you having problem telling any of your stories? Um, I cannot say no. I I can I tell my story educationally. However, I have never paid attention to see whether or not they were humorous, and that's why I put in the box humorously yes. Yeah. Because I've never paid attention. That's something I probably need to start to do. No. Yeah. If I'm speaking, you can hear it, but... Bill has heard my story, at least part of my story. Uh, did you get any humor from it, Bill? Bill, have you gotten any humor from her stories? Do you catch humor into it? Food for thought. That's something I'm yeah. going to pay attention Bill to. Bill might be in the middle of doing something. He, I like how Bill kind of pays attention and he comes in when needed. So <laughs> That's I Bill's thought, story. He's sticking to it. Put him in four parts. Oh, multitasking is never my strength. Yeah. I was present once when somebody said it eats up um, valuable brain cells. So that scared me. So. Yeah. So I try to make the stories. I mean, when you talk about your story, try to make, you know I mean? Trying to find the edge, the edutainment side of it, huh. because you got to try to entertain with it. Yeah. Is, um, I mean, I started telling parts of my story, like like I tell people that my motorcycle stories. Yeah. Um, I tell a lot about my, you know, my mom will tell you, you know what I mean? The first time I rode motorcycle, I was like 18 months year old. And at 18 months of age, I got on my tricycle and rolled down, rode, rode down the center of a four lane highway with it. You know what I mean? And Wow. 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 Like, huh, huh? You know, I don't know how old I was when that happened. I mean, I pick a random month every time. And my mom, if she was there, she'd tell you, she remembers living the experience of having someone bring me back to the door with the tricycle and you're here, your kids riding down the middle of the four lane highway out here. <laughs> so why, um, you know, um, you probably couldn't tell, but I am from Jamaica, West Indies, right? Mm -hmm. And, um, growing up in Jamaica, we have some of everybody. We have the, the Jewish man and his business is called a haberdashery because they sell pots and pans, they sell material by the yard, but everybody know my father. So my father was a farmer and growing up, the only bank account that my parents had was to whatever they harvest and the animals that they raise. So I grew up in a community where everybody was interdependent on each other. So. If I would go to the market one day and the Jewish man didn't see my father with me, he would say, what happened to Mass James today? And I would tell him what happened to my father. But then I got a rude awakening when I came to the United States because I had no idea that I was a minority. I had no idea I was black. I had no idea I was a single parent. So then I came here and all these labels was being attached to me. So many labels, I begin getting dizzy. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for every time I would sit with a journalist for the newspaper or any other publicity I was getting, I would tell them that because people try to fit me in a box, but I always surprise them in the middle. Mm -hmm. they, put the, they put the lid down and I pop the lid over. So they, they learn quite quickly that they couldn't fit me in a box because mm -hmm. I keep popping out every minute they turn the eye around. Yeah. yeah. So that was just a quick attempt because I've never told the story like that before. Well, so, and let me, let me actually w work with you on that. You know what I mean? One of the ways to actually use that story is what is one of the things you said, and you can make it into a funny point is I came to the United States. I, I mean, I didn't know I was a minority. I didn't even know I was black. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can't tell I'm black, right? I mean, that's what I would use that. Yeah. Because now that becomes funny. Like, you know what I mean? You can't tell, right? I I've been hiding it for so long. I didn't know it. Ooh, thanks, Tim. I love that. That's the funny out of it. And yeah. I mean, 
that's me. I would make funny. It's like, you know what I mean? Yeah, I, I grew up as a girl. You know what I mean? I never got my hair cut, so I figured I'd just be a guy now. I, you know, I, I would make fun of it. I love that. I love that. I'm going to try that. <laughs> now I'm I'm seeing Mari, uh, Mariani. I can see Mariani, her. Mariani, yes. Mariani, hello. I can't see hello. Tim myself. So I'm mm. seeing you. This is girls. My friend Sharon. Hey, Sharon. So I well I hope that helps you. I mean, because that's it. I, you you we can't see in our own story what we got to tell. Yeah, that was very helpful, and that's something we can utilize because so many years I've never thought of doing it humorously. So that's good. I mean, take it humorously, and then go. You know what? I still don't believe I'm black. Oh no! It's all in the belief. The honest truth. And someone come up and go. Have you looked in the mirror? I go. Why? Hey. Uh, when I look in the mirror, I mean, I would. I, I knew a guy who used to do this. He was in his 60s. He had gray hair, and he used to say, I'm 39 years old. I have blonde hair. I'm 180 pounds, and if you don't see that, you're the one with the problem, not me. Right. <laughs> hey, I, that's true, too, because I, I always, when I got into the color and uh, thing conversation, I always say to, to people that, the reason I teach diversity is because I don't see color and all of that. Because growing up in Jamaica, it wasn't a part of my mm -hmm. upbringing. Everybody was a human being. I mean, we were interdependent. The Chinese, everybody have a different hair texture, texture, different skin color. We were all interdependent on each other. Mm -hmm. And that was the value that I grew up with. And I am so um, I am so happy that that was my early beginning because it helps me now to be free mm -hmm. and to be able to operate in the community that I'm now a part of with any hang-ups and any prejudices and all of that. I am so accustomed to be turning up at event where I'm the only person there who's looking like me, but I'm, I'm in my element. Mm -hmm. Because to me, I'm just another person there. And that, I mean, perfect person to teach yeah, that, diversity. That even fits in, even when I share with you, there even fits into your story. It fits into your, what you're teaching. It's beautiful. Yes. Yeah. Thank, thank you, Tim. You bet. I'm glad to help out. That's what I'm here for. Yes. No. Mary Annie, how much, am I, how, tell me how to say this right now. Because it looks like Martini to me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's the fun text. <laughs> It's Mari. It's it's Mariani. Mariani. It, it just it, it depends, depends if you say it with a little bit of an accent. I okay. say Mariani. It's the company I work for. I'm the social media marketer for okay. Mariani. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So we're trying to get into lab. We are trying to be the forerunners in our industry with mm -hmm. social media. We have a whole dedicated department to uh, blog all our posts, and now we're getting into lab, and we're trying to get into lab and some other live streaming at the beginning, right early on, and, and build um, additional mm -hmm. topics like uh, home improvement landscaping, but not from a DIY perspective, from more of, a, of an extraordinary perspective. Um, I typed in the blog address. If you go look at it, you can see our, our goal, our company story is timeless quality. That's what we're going for. And um, another really great speaker, Bonnie Frank suggested that we know our avatar and I do know our avatar. The problem is I don't know where to find our avatar online in a streaming yeah. setting. So I want to build our streaming audience and I might have to create a new avatar and decide what story to tell. Um, well, I mean, I'm going to go with telling some of your success stories. All right. And, uh, uh, okay. Uh, even, I mean, I'm one of those people who would create the uniqueness about your story and what you do when I put out my branding. And I, I work with a lot of people on their unique startup brands, but I work with individuals, not companies. So it, it, it might be a little different for what I try to work with you on. So, but forgive me on that. We can still work with it. Um, I go with individuals and some of the unique ones I've done was this lady who was a 911 operator who wanted to do uh, write a book and, and a workbook on communication. And we, we took her story of being a 911 operator and we realized she was really good at talking people with people one-on-one -on -one to calm them down. So I said, would you say that there's just one way to do it? And she said, no, there's multiple ways. I says, any chance you have nine ways? And she goes, why? 
I says, because I would call the book 911 Communications, Nine Ways to Communicate with People One-on-One. -on -one. Oh, wow, look at that. Fantastic. That's it. I mean, but now, now base all your stories around that. Tell people nine different conversations you had and how you helped them. In your case there, I mean, I'm also about funny. Landscaping, I would say, yeah, yeah, we, we come online to mow your grass. You know what I mean? It's like I would make fun of that. Some That's me. It may not be you. All right? But it's certainly a way to yeah. draw business, to draw, to draw people in, maybe start out with something that, uh, draws in a casual visitor or someone who's just interested in hearing what we have to say and and build on it and maybe expand in different yeah. directions uh, th There's nothing I have find no negatives in being yeah. funny I think that being funny wa People want to come and chat with you when you're yeah. entertaining and so and, and the other thing about it is is you, You've got to have ed even if you use educational videos because I know if, not with not with blab but with YouTube I have a friend in, in uh, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and they, they're selling that business now. They're out of it. But they used to be in. It was shredding, all right, and uh, and um, was it shredding and copying? I forget what it was. It was document-type copying and shredding and, and, and services. And what they did was they went to YouTube and blogging. There's 25 or 26 other competitors in that town. They became the number one in the industry because they started to use YouTube videos. All they did right. was shredding. And like if they had a hard drive, can you shred this? And they'd make a video about it. They'd entirely make a video. They okay. would talk about all their stuff and do videos with it. If something unique came in for them to destroy, they the, the staff knew to save it so that they can video doing it. And I mean, for your case, it's landscaping. I don't do my own landscaping because I'm in a condo community, but Truthfully, I'm, I do my home improvements. If you know what I mean, my, we we did that that kitchen. We did that. Go look at my Facebook page and see my picture. That last year was not that. Right. Yeah. Um, we do our own our, a lot of our own little unique things because it's what stuff we like. We have rental properties that we like to do some of the work. Well, my wife does. I don't. Just truthfully here. Um, <laughs> but landscaping. There's people out there who want to have that as part of their life. What can you teach them? Right, and that's the client base, and that's the story that we have yeah. to learn to teach because we have a wide range of potential clients that go from the simple client who wants to do most of it themselves, but will come in and do the anything with chemicals, for example, so you don't have to deal with spraying or anything toxic. We can go as small as that to as large as redesigning a 10-acre yeah. property with stone and ponds and water features and garden structures and driveways and seven different kinds of brick. And so we, I, maybe we would need multiple yeah. stories for the different tiers of people. You do. And one of the things I'm going to recommend you do, I mean, and it's kind of in the lines of what Bonnie was teaching you, because I know Bonnie, I know very well, she's a very great, very, very great business coach here in, online is do you need to know what your competition is in town? We do. That's we have yeah. thoroughly researched that. We're very and one of the on best that. speakers here in the Dallas area was this plumber in Dallas, and he used to do this. He went to all he did was go to all these little networking functions, and when he was asked to speak, he would give you a speech on the seven things you need to know when you hire a plumber. And he would have people oh, okay. taking notes down okay. on what to do when they hire a plumber, because how many of them right. at that meeting are going to hire a plumber that day? None. But when they need a plumber, right. what are they going to go look That's for? the one they're going to remember. They're looking for that list of so seven. Can I? And of everything on those seven, guess who the only plumber in town was who did all seven of them? Do all seven of those things. <laughs> Brilliant. Marketing. So do, can I start this? Can I start it on my own as an individual for Mariani? Or do I always need to have a guest speaker of sorts who's going to help me with those points. You know, like here's one of our key designers. Tell us what, you know, the things that, you know, we need clients should look for when looking for a designer versus a maintenance crew versus a water feature versus lighting. Should I break it up? Should yes. I talk about each topic? You should break it up. And here's okay, some of the things great. you should do. Let's say you put a water feature at someone's house, ask them, say, Hey, would you be willing to come on a, a video show with me to talk about your experience in this? Get them actually okay. on there and Every say, hey, tell me about the first night with that water feature. What did you guys do? All right. And they could, you know, hey, we poured our glasses of wine. We went out there with chairs and sat there and stared at it. And 
it's not – you don't think it's all that entertaining, but to the one guy who's going oh, but it would be. water features, yeah. you can see a million YouTube videos right. of water features, but when you hear the guy talking about his experience with his wife watching the water feature – and how happy she is. Guess who he's <laughs> right. going to call yeah. to put the water feature in. Excellent. And you're not Fantastic. selling it. So specialists and you're experience. You're selling the experience. Right. You're just talking about it. Okay. Yeah. That's what stories do. They sell the experience. That's all they do is sell the experience. All right. And you want right. everybody who you come in contact with, you want them to uh, realize that they so sold on the experience that when they get off the off that video, whatever it is, after they've searched the internet to find it, and they find yours, you didn't market yourself the whole time. Your customer told all about their experience, and you go, right. I don't, it's going to extol the virtues of the situation. I don't want that experience. Right. Guess who they're going to call? You're hitting them when they're ready Fantastic. to buy by providing the information way ahead of time. And then uh, every single one of these interviews becomes a, a, a step in our sales stream that we can then – show prospective customers, put on our website, share on our blog. So it, it has value in addition to the live version and also the replays and the recordings have all kinds yep, of yep. value. So the other thing that you would consider doing is, is have you ever done, have you ever taken over projects that someone else screwed up and someone says, I need you guys to come fix this? I, yes, I know we have. Yes. So those are video yep. formats, okay, where you may not be on blab like that with that, but a periscope moment where you photograph okay. it and you go out there and you're doing a video of it going, well, that, and think about it. If you ever seen the TV show, Mike Holmes, Holmes on Holmes, where he talks about the screw ups people so. made and why you need to do it right. Okay. If okay. you're out there talking right. about that, yes, a lot of people are going to go, you, most people fear that those people are now going to study that so they can do it right themselves. But truthfully, yeah, I, we're not concerned about that. But yeah, I get fifty percent of yeah. those people are going to so attempt it on their own, and when they fail, what are they going to do? Right, call gonna, you to fix it up because right. you taught them how to do it right. Right, and and also, and, and also what we do, the uniqueness you mentioned, the, what's unique about us, even though we're not an individual, people can't do what we do. It, it, we have you have to get seven different subcontractors and and engineers and architects and designers. And it, it's virtually impossible for a single person in any reasonable amount of time to take on these projects that we do. So that's why I say that we sort of know our avatar and we want to reach out to them and, and build that target base because the, they're, they're available, they're out there. They want to be doing these wonderful projects. So those are wonderful, fantastic ideas. So thank you very much. The other thing I was going to, I just, I mean, I, I think of them here. That's all I do is think of this stuff. But is, you know what I mean? Uh, um, sell the experience of yes. when you're ready to, when you're ready to experience your new landscape, come to the company that can get you to the experience faster. Excellent. That's that's cement because that's it. You're trying to get them to the experience yeah. of their new landscape setup. Okay, get you to the experience yeah. faster. Wonderful. Great. Thank you very much. That was just a ton of excellent information. Excellent. I'm glad to Thank help. You. That's This is what I do with some of these things. So I uh, saw the Facebook ad. You know, okay. Uh, use your customer's story to, to tell your company story. I love that. Yeah, that's, exactly. that's what we'll put yes. in there. We'll do that repeatedly. We'll keep doing no. that. Where are you guys located? Out of? Some funny fails, actually. We are in Lake Bluff, Illinois, north okay. of Chicago. So we, we uh, cater to the North Shore um, in Illinois and, we, and downtown Chicago and then some of the western okay. suburbs also. So we have a pretty wide range. We have two uh, facilities, a headquarters up north and then a satellite office in the southwest suburbs, uh, the western suburbs to accommodate oh, that okay. area. And we have we have several dozen crews and a whole team that just, just yeah. design and a whole production team that just, just new yeah. builds. So it's... So there's educational videos that you have for people to see on your website is about what you have, but don't focus your marketing on what you have. Focus your marketing on the experience. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's great. I mean, that's, that's going to be easy to do because a, a periscope is easy to experience a garden with a periscope as a starting yeah. point. And then, uh, like you said, bringing in a client, that's just yeah. genius. <laughs> so we'll, we'll be working on that. Yeah. In the next. Some month. of the things I've done with, with periscope is like, I, I'm a Harley rider. And I go to the Harley dealer and I'm getting my bike fixed. And while it's there and getting fixed, I go out and talk to the salespeople. And one of them 
I just turned on Periscope and asked him a question. He spent 15 minutes answering it. So I asked him another one, 15 minutes answering it. I took that recording, went home, and I put it up on my Facebook page. I tagged yeah. him. You know what he did? He told all of his friends, check He's it out on my Tim's page. Yeah. Put it on my blog. <laughs> tagged him. Guess Great. what he did? Hey, check out what Tim wrote about me. Imagine nice. doing that with your customers. Hey, check it out. I my see. landscaping made the magazine cut. You know what I mean? It, right. You think that they're not going to advertise for you? They're going to advertise more than you can. And that's the right client. A lot of our clients are so private. They don't want advertisements. They don't want to be on Facebook. They don't want to, their sites published. But we can just put those customers yeah. to the side and focus on the ones that want to sort of speak out about how happy they are in their experiences. So yeah, that'll work. Definitely. Speak about Thank their experiences to get them to show their experience. So the positive nature. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you very much. Glad to help pleasure. you out. Yeah. Again soon. So uh, Anna, you want to jump in or, or, or Bill, either one of you guys. So let's see who else we've got in here. Fun today, fun today. I'll tell you, I'm having loads of fun. Uh, yeah, I've got about, uh, go ahead, because I've got about five, ten more minutes I've got to take off, so. I'll make Anna my last one. I like having fun with her anyway. Hello, girl. Hi. So what did you see? You seen the thing for this on Facebook or what? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, huh? I, I can't yeah. hear you. Is it working? There you go. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, I think, I believe I saw, um, uh, I read something on Facebook. It uh, had like a, a link to an article. I read the article. And then um, then you said something about, on the bottom about, I love how Facebook has us push the ads and then cancels it or something on us. And I'm like, oh man. So then I went to other things and then I was over on Twitter and then I saw something like about your show. I'm like, oh, it's not, oh no, uh, I was on, on the lab uh, scrolling down. Like, oh yeah, his show's there. You know, I just oh. I have ADHD, and I went to bed at like five a.m. So I woke oh, up okay. at noon. So I'm kind of closer to rock star hours than the than the, you know normal hours. <laughs> Live in the rock star dream <laughs> more than I am. Uh -huh. So, um, um, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll check that out. Yeah, they. I, I'm. I'm. In, I'm intrigued. I'm gonna be connected with those people. I hope. I hope. I hope to see a lot more coming from them. So that was cool to actually have that. That was a cool experience there to help, and that's. I love it when I get to do that. So, um, yeah. I, I, so you actually seen the Facebook where I said uh, uh, Facebook actually asked me, and, I, and I'm not talking about this today. I'm talking about something else. But Facebook actually asked me, um, "Hey, you need to you need to boost this post." So I did. Mm -hmm. And they shut the ad down. Uh, that's not okay. I'm like, because the picture in the ad had more, had too much text in it. Oh, I didn't know there was a limit on that. Yeah, there is. And that's why I'm like, what the heck? Why did you tell me to boost the post? Right. Can't you, know, you tell? Out of the thousands anyway. of pictures you must have, that one and boom. Yeah. But the, I got because, the juice the thing today, so at least that reminded me to look. And, and guess what? I, I actually have your book right here. You got it, huh? <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I, not only do I have it, but um, there's a, a post that I put on YouTube, um, one of my blogs, our labs here. Um, and I have to edit out like two or three minutes of like audio doubt from the beginning. But uh, it goes through what's on my nightstand. And I have a lot of these self-help type books on my nightstand. And um, I'm really making myself answer the questions from yours because I know you. And there's a little built-in accountability right there. And uh, um, and I know Joel uh, Bodges, and I have his book on my nightstand also. And okay. uh, uh, his questions are really hard and deep and stuff like to – and yours are pretty hard too. And but I'm actually making myself. I'm. It's it's sad. I'm only on like page nine, but I'm doing the thing. I'm doing the work. I have. Yeah, you know, I got a, a notebook. I'm I'm doing the thing. So you know, it's it's like it's like panning for jewels or something. You're like oh, dig 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 sit sit sit. sit. You know? Wait till the blog one comes out. The what? Wait till the blog one comes out. 
there, oh, there's a blog question. Maybe? I got a blogging book coming. I'm working on right now. So Ooh, cool. Yeah, because I don't know how to blog. I I I, I know when I see a good one, yeah. and I collect some of them. On I have a Pinterest page, um, mm -hmm. and so I um. A lot of my brain, I'm kind of visual, so my, a lot of my brain's on my Pinterest. So like, like it's not so much what I've created, but what I've res, what resonates with me online. And I just have little like boards of what I dig. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I, I, my Pinterest is a lot different than a lot of other people's. Um, a lot of other people have like, you know, boards just on shoes or lipstick or whatever. But I have one board, you know, for that. It's called Reluctant Fashionista, and <laughs> it covers covers some of that. And then, um, so. I haven't. It's like I have this one board called work, and I'm kind of depositing things that I'm learning from Blab there. That even though it's not my career yet, it's something that seems to like I can go and work an eight-hour day at work, like a whole nine-hour day, you know, with the the one-hour lunch. Come home, be on Blab or social media until you know nine hours later, and I'm more energized after the nine hours online than I am at the nine hours at work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, you will see that it's just it's it's where you get your energy. Um, yeah. I got again. I use I I got my energy from listening to rock and roll music. My mom told me that stuff is that will ruin your mind. Yeah. But that's where I got my energy. Oh my gosh! Yes, like the best is like you're in your car. You have a surround sound thing going, and you're singing with the tunes. And yeah, yeah. Oh, you know, oh the best is when you're in a band. Like if you're I, you probably have done rock star stuff too that way, but I was in um, my band in high school and it was a, um, uh, it wasn't an orchestra. It was just, you know, a band. It didn't have violins and stuff, but where I was, was I played timpani. So I was in the back. Mm -hmm. And so I got a really great, you get the whole band in front of you and you hear the sound echo behind you. It's just the best place to hear mm -hmm. music I, I, like you sit in the audience you're like oh that's nice but i wonder what it sounds like near the timpani you know because mm -hmm. it's different you're, you're more uh, enveloped yeah that's it and i actually have a coach who teaches people to plug plug music in while they write oh. i have people tell me oh, that don't work oh what works for you works for you i mean and, and there's so many people out there go, well this is the way you have to do it i call bullshit okay right. you can't the way I do things is not always the way that's going to work for you to do things. Absolutely. I can give you the ideas, the motivation, the things that are going to drive you to get the work done. I can't give you that. All right. Okay. So, yeah. But yeah. So I think I'm in that, that storing up creative mode where I'm just kind of building what I want to talk about, you know what I mean? Before I do the thing, because I don't want to just start to have a blab, a blog and I have nothing to say. You know what I mean? So, yeah. I don't know if that's helpful for your recording, but uh, no, that's good. So, Anthony, you got to fill out your profile a little bit more before I'm going to let you in. Um, so, I mean, that's that, that's it. You find your motivation. I'm glad to see that the book's helping you. Um, you know what I mean? And uh, let me know. I mean, there's stuff in the book that tells you to uh, actually, you know what I mean, connect with me when you actually do get something out of it. So, okay, yeah. Sounds good. But so. anyway, so out of all the stack of books, I have, like, I have like if you if you look at my on YouTube on my channel, you'll see there's like one there's like four playlists, and those are playlists I usually shoot over to Robert before his show. Um, mm -hmm. That's just something I do for fun. But underneath that is my one video, and if you ignore some of the audio doubt, which is kind of fun for me to watch me fumble through it, but. Um, when you finally get into what kind of stuff is on my nightstand, you'll get a little bit more of a picture of what I'm trying to dig to, you know, through what I'm reading. Okay. Okay. Cool. Okay. You want me about right. it? <laughs> Thanks for stopping in. All right, guys, I'm going to close this down. All right. I do have to go uh, run to another event. So, Anna, thank you for stopping in. Uh, you know, Mar Mariana, I thank you for coming in today. Uh, and uh, we also had Daphne drop in. So, uh, great things here, guys. Learn. It's your story. I can't tell your story. Only you can tell your story. All right. And and learn to use it and learn to find unique ways to tell your story to more and more people. 
Uh, we'll be back tomorrow with another one of our episodes on Rock Around Your Blog. Have a good day, man.